Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Ashutosh Kumar Nirala, and I'll be presenting our paper on fast certification. This is a joint work uh, with my advisor, Professor Swamik Sarkar from Iowa State University, and also Professor Chinma Hegde from New York University, and his former student, Amma Joshi, who has graduated and is now working. So uh, I'll, we have developed this method, open vocabulary certification. So let's start by talking about CLIP, which is an open vocabulary classifier by OpenAI, and I assume that most of you know exactly what it is. So uh, the vocabulary of a traditional classifier is usually limited to the data set on which it is trained on. So for example, if I'll train a network on, say, ImageNet, then I can say that it only has, say, 1,000 vocabulary. However, the CLIP has a vocabulary size of 50,000, approximately, and it achieved this feat because it is trained on internet scale data. So essentially, it has uh, two encoders. One is text encoder, and another is image encoder, and it is trained on this image and caption pairs. So caption somehow describes the image, and the loss is designed in a way that these two encoders are aligned. Meaning, if the text will describe the image correctly, then if I'll take the dot product between the encodings of the two, then the value will be high, otherwise the value will be low. So we can use this as a classifier. So first thing which we need to do is uh, find a text, or which we often say a prompt, like a photo of a, and then a placeholder, which is the class name. And we can substitute it with uh, different, uh, like, class names, like a photo of a plane, a photo of a car. So the n classes in which we want to classify an image. We pass it through the text encoder, and we get the encoding. So now it is ready to classify any image into these n classes. So we simply pass the image, take the encoding, and whichever uh, like a dot product gives us the highest value, that is our uh, final class. And uh, the good thing is that uh, we can design our own prompts also. So we can apply it to various data sets. These are some of the sample prompts uh, given by OpenAI for ImageNet. And there are some classes. And they found that this zero-shot accuracy, where it is not trained on any, image, any data set or not tuned on, that itself is higher than, say, ResNet50, which is tuned for a specific data set. So all this is great, like we got kind of an universal classifier, but sadly it is uh, also vulnerable to adversarial attacks. And another thing is that since an end user can make their own you know, prompt for classification, so we define our problem that if we are given the certification information from some existing prompts, then we would like to certify a novel prompt quickly. So we are allowed to use the existing prompts info, uh, certification information. And for that, we have developed two methods. And by certification over here, I mean adversarial certification. So we are interested in finding the maximum amount of radius in LP norm on the normalized image pixel space, which an adversary can perturb the image to. And the classification of the, class, uh, of the classifier should not change. So uh, both our approaches are based on randomized smoothing, the only approach uh, which seems to scale. And in randomized smoothing, instead of like a point classifier, uh, we use a classifier which is a smooth version of it. Basically, it is classifying a distribution around the point, specifically the Gaussian distribution. And this tight bond on this radius was given by a Cohen et al. So what we are doing here is we take a point and we add Gaussian noise to it. And each time we make a prediction. And we count that what is the number of times a certain class was predicted. A is the topmost class, that is which is predicted most of the time. B is the runner-up class. And PA and PB are their uh, estimate, like PA bar means that uh, this is the lower bound, which is usually calculated from binomial proportion. Phi inverse is the inverse of uh, cumulative distribution function of standard Gaussian. And we can further simplify by noting that PV will never exceed 1 minus PA. So for certification, what we need to do is we take an image, we add Gaussian noise multiple times, say 100,000 times, to get a good estimate. We get this number PA. And uh, depending on what is the standard deviation, we can get a radius R. So this is randomized smoothing. So in our case, uh, we 
exploited this method, incremental randomized smoothing. So in this case, suppose that instead of one model, we have two models, and we know the certification information from the first model. And the second model is somewhat similar to the first model. So in this paper setting, they argued that the second model could be, say, a pruned version or quantized version where weights are pruned or quantized so that it can fit in, say, smaller memory. So uh, if my models are similar, then they are likely to make similar predictions. So for that, uh, they tried to bound this zeta between the prediction of the two models. And if I can bound it, then I can know the PA for the, or like the top class probability for the second model by simply subtracting this uh, zeta from, you know, PA of the previous model. And the key insight is that for binomial proportion, if my zeta is small, like if the two models are similar and say it's less than 1%, then I can get that value using very few samples. So instead of like 100,000 samples, I can get a reasonably good estimate, like 99.5% certainty, with just using 1,000 samples or maybe fewer. So in a nutshell, PA was obtained for the first model using large samples, which took a lot of time, and this zeta was obtained quickly. So I can certify the second model quickly. So we thought, great, let's try to use it for CLIP. Unfortunately, we found that even when two prompts are very similar, where we are me measuring similarity in cosine uh, similarity, we also tried Euclidean distance of the normalized embeddings. We saw that the PA is all over the place. So unfortunately, we cannot directly use it. However, we thought that, uh, let's say that we have information known for, say, 70 prompts, that certification information, PA is known. Now I get a novel prompt. Now I'm asking the question, is there any prompt out of these 70 which makes similar prediction for a given input? And we found that if we take, say, 500 samples, then for approximately 33% of them, it is uh, like I can find at least one prompt from the existing prompt where uh, the prediction is like 99% similar. So we thought, great. At least for these 33% prompt, we can use our incremental randomized smoothing. Otherwise, uh, we have to resort to randomized smoothing. And this gives us uh, results like this. On the x-axis, we have like uh, this randomized smoothing certification. And on the y, we are using our uh, modified version. And we see that wherever we have used modified version, since we are reducing the probability. We are getting slightly lower certificate, but it's still quite reasonable to us. So we thought, great. And uh, this is the speed up for different configuration. So we can see that for smaller networks like VIT, sometimes we even get 3x certification when the noise is less. But as we increase the noise, then uh, like our gain is lost. And we found that this is happening because as we increase our noise, it's very hard to find you know, the prompt which is making similar prediction. So that is a limitation of this method. So that was uh, our first method. Now let's talk about the second approach. So here we notice that uh, Clip makes a prediction like this, like we have text encoder and we have image encoder. And when we are certifying it, we add noise only to the image. So here I'm trying to certify for a novel prompt. So this portion of uh, like image encoding will not change. So we thought that we can simply cache this. And if we do that, then of course we'll get a lot of speed up because we will not be you know, uh, passing the input to this image encoder multiple times. But that will take a lot of space. So instead of that, we simply fitted a multivariate normal to it. So now instead of say 100,000 embeddings, we just need to store one mean and one covariance matrix, which will just take a fraction of you know, space. And now we sample the embedding from this uh, multivariate normal distribution, and uh, like we certify for the specific input. And here we can do something better, because we need to multiply this uh, with the prompt embedding, which is a linear multiplication. So instead of having this multivariate normal in the embedding space, we can directly translate it to the logit space, and we can sample from there. And this will give us exactly the same result. 
We did that and we saw this plot. So again, on the x-axis, we have the actual certification using randomized smoothing. And on the y-axis, we have multivariate normal. And when we first saw this, we were like, wow, this is great. Like, when two prompts are very similar, it was all over the place. And here, the radius is, there is almost a linear relationship. But unfortunately, uh, like, for all the points which are above this uh, red line, our estimate is actually higher than the actual, you know, uh, certification radius. And we are saying that this is a certificate, so that's bad. We need to somehow bring it down. And we tried to approximate the error in the multivariate normal, like that would be the ideal way to go, but unfortunately at this high dimension it was very difficult for us to do it. So instead, we simply resorted to reducing the PA, uh, whatever is the top class probability, by 1%. And when we do that, we get something like this. So now, for like 0.6 almost, we are getting almost similar to the actual radius, and it almost never overshoots the actual radius. We tested it for a different architecture, and we found a similar result. And this is the speed up. So if we cache the embedding directly, we get like uh, 46 times speed up for our, our ResNet 50 backbone. But if we fit a multivariate normal, then we do not even uh, need to read this large amount of data from the disk. So we save some time over there also. And this is the speed up for other backbones, like uh, for say larger backbones, we are getting even threefold of speed up. So I would say like this uh, approximation is worth it. So in uh, conclusion, we have developed this, uh, these two techniques our modified incremental randomized smoothing, it gives us a confidence which is similar to the randomized smoothing, but it gives us a less speed up. Multivariate normal gives us a lot of speed up, but uh, like it's empirical in some sense. And as a further improvement, uh, we would like to quantify the error in our multivariate normal approximation because uh, there is no real reason why the output of clip should be a multivariate normal. So if you have any ideas, please discuss it with me offline. That would be great. And the second thing is that in our incremental randomized smoothing, since we have two prompts, it is possible that for the second prompt also, the probability of the class can be more than you know, the previous prompt. So we, had, uh, we have some ideas on this. We also got some results. So we are working on that. So that's all from me. If you have any questions.